Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our advanced idle tuning technique in our GM Gen 4 applications. So in the previous video, we took a look at our basic idle tuning procedures. So we know we have to raise our base airflow and raise our spark timing in order to get the desired idle speed that we want. There's gonna be a process to that. And again, we went over that already. Now, if you get into a situation where you have a really large cam installed and you're having a really tough time dialing in your base airflow table and your spark timing because they're gonna have a effect on one another. So if we dial in more spark timing, we have more idle torque where our RPM is going to be raising and then we need to go and lower the base airflow table and then we find the opposite effect. So if we go in and have more base running airflow, we need to go and lower our spark timing and we need to find a balance between them. And a lot of times with a really large cam, it's going to be difficult to figure out exactly what kind of values we need in these tables. So we have to go then into a more advanced approach at dealing with the idle control. We're going to go into our adaptive controls for the airflow, which is going to be controlling the throttle plate movement, as well as going and zeroing out any kind of adaptive control for the spark timing. Once we do that, we're able to utilize the VCM scanner to actually alter the spark timing in real time, as well as going into our base running airflow table and figure out what is going to be the sweet spot between our ignition timing and our base running airflow values to get the desired idle speed that we want. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to take a look at our advanced idle tuning technique in our GM Gen 4 applications. We'll find in the previous video, we took a look at our basic idle tuning routine. So I went over some suggestions for your base spark timing, as well as your airflow final minimum table based on the cam size you're working with. So that's going to allow us to get the engine to fire up and run, and then uh, start to do our process to tuning our mass airflow sensor curve and or our virtual volumetric efficiency tables. We need to get the air mass registration back in line so that the engine is going to run properly. Then we can take a further refined look at our idle control, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, we need to strip away the adaptive controls that are going to be going on so that we can clearly expose how the base running airflow or the final airflow minimum table is going to be used as well as our base spark timing because both of them are going to be playing a role and hand in hand with each other. So if we raise our base spark timing values, it's going to be producing more engine torque Therefore, we're going to need to close the throttle plate a little bit more and have less base running airflow values so that we're going to reduce our idle speed. We don't have a too high of an idle speed and vice versa. If we raise our base running airflow, it's going to move our throttle plate open more and then it's going to require us to drop our idle spark so that we reduce the torque and the engine RPM comes down. So we need to get them working hand in hand with each other so that when we go again, turn the adaptive controls back on. So the over and under speed spark timing and or the adaptive airflow, it's going to make sure that everything's gonna be playing nice together. This is gonna be the same kind of concept if we're just working with uh, dialing in our, our base running airflow table of trying to tune the mass airflow sensor curve while we have the volumetric efficiency still turned on in our dynamic mode. So we talked about disabling um, the, the, uh, the speed density portion so we could focus just on the mass, mass airflow tuning and then turning off the mass airflow and focusing just on the speed density portion. It would be like trying to dial in our fuel tables at the same time, which is gonna be super confusing. We know that would be a complete mess to, to, to do and that's exactly what the idle control is gonna be doing here. So we need to strip away all, all the adaptive nature that's going on. Uh, before we go into anything else, I just want to establish the kind of five key areas that we need to work with and pay attention to when we take a look at the advanced idle control. We have our airflow final minimum table here. Let's jump into engine. Let's jump in here to our idle. Let's move into our airflow. So the airflow final minimum table, this is going to be a step. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.